Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on Arrow Season 7. Yeah, and this is going to be my review for the mid-season premiere for this season, otherwise known as Episode 10, otherwise entitled, My Name is Emiko Queen. And for everyone that was commenting when I was saying Emiko Queen before, Pagey, it's Emiko! Well, the show just confirmed it's Emiko. So now I feel like an idiot for the past two or three weeks saying Emiko. The show is calling it Emiko, so that's what we're going with. I knew I was right. Why did I second guess myself and change? Anyway. So, of course, spoil it. If you've not watched the episode, go watch it, because some big stuff happens in this episode. Um, and yeah, so if you have not watched it, go watch it and come back to this video later on. But of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave a like on the video to show support, especially if you're excited for Arrow being back. And let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on this episode. What did you like? What did you, what did you dislike? What did you love? What did you hate? And just give me your overall opinions and maybe your favorite part of the episode as well down there in the comments. And of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, I guess. So the episode before this, that's relevant, you know, they mentioned the Elseworlds crossover like once or twice in this episode, but the last real episode of Arrow was where we had Emiko Queen properly introduced without them saying Emiko. They just had her unmasked for a lot of them. We knew she was Green Arrow or the new Green Arrow from the get-go in the episode. But really, we saw all of us start to work with the SCPD. And um, yeah, so it's basically just setting some of that stuff up for this episode and episodes to follow from this one. But to start off the episode, we get some cool opening Emiko scenes, uh, basically notebook clearing. That's probably the best way to describe it. We see the notebook and she's clearing it. At the beginning, when it was flashing to the notebook, I thought it said William Claiborne for some reason. Um, obviously, William Claiborne is Oliver's son's actual name. Um, so I thought it was like, why is he on there? It's like, he's, is he going to die? But it was actually uh, William Glenn Morgan, I think the guy's name was, who is relevant later on in the episode. So I was a bit confused there. But essentially, she's just going through that notebook, basically going like, hey, season one, Oliver, you took like a whole season to clear your notebook. Watch me do it in a montage at the beginning of this episode. So I thought that was pretty funny. Or well, not funny, but pretty, uh, pretty action intense. But speaking of Emiko, we see her like uh, get into a security building and do some hacking with her... I think it was, a, it was either a large phone or a smaller tablet, one of the two. Uh, but she actually gets shot in this process by the security guards there. And she can't go to a hospital because, you know, usually with a gunshot wound, they're going to investigate it. So she goes to Renee instead because, you know, uh, the, without Renee knowing who she was or know, knowing who the new Green Arrow was, the new Green Arrow and Renee had that, you know, bond or at least, you know, camaraderie, if you want to call it earlier on in the season. Now, Oliver didn't play that big of a role in this episode. And for those wondering, it's very similar to uh, Barry in last episode of The Flash. They were filming, uh, the, I think, the last week of the crossover, uh, the Elseworlds crossover, when these episodes were being filmed. Uh, or at least they crossed over a bit for a lot of the days, maybe like four or five of the days. So that's why the main actors for each show weren't really that, you know, there in episode 10 uh, for each of those shows. So Oliver, well, Stephen Mel was busy doing crossover, so that's why he wasn't really in this episode so much. But in regards to Oliver, we see him start off uh, being a well, an SCPD employee outside of the Green Arrow outfit. And well, the other employees of the SCPD, like the crime scene unit and stuff like that, not the biggest fans, like giving them a lot of shade and giving a lot of a lot of sick. And as I've been saying in some of my bonus videos for Arrow over the break, hopefully that doesn't last like four or five episodes because it's going to get old and it's just been like, Holy crap, who works at the SCPD? Just a bunch of softies. Like, get over it. This guy's working with you now. Surely it's not that bad. So, hopefully, maybe next episode we might get it, but hopefully just they move on from that fairly quickly because I think it'd just be a bit too... Well, a bit too much. Like, it's not not needed. If that That's the best way to put it. It's not needed. But we do get some Argus stuff in this episode, which was cool. We get Diaz and Lila first off. And Lila, I thought, was pretty badass in the scene, basically putting Diaz in his place by saying, like, yo... You're the property of Argus now, bitch. You're not, you're not some like, don't think of yourself as like some massive commodity, mate. You are property of us. You're basically a ghost. No one, well, that's a ghost. That's a good word to use because it's relevant later on. But you're basically a ghost. No one knows you're here. You know, we can do with you what we want. We can just chuck you in a cell and leave you there for the rest of your life if you want. Or you can, you know, you can work with us. You can work with us. Help us out. We'll help you out. Just, you know, give it back and forth, you know, pay it forward. Now, I forgot to mention at that, at that crime scene, Oliver does get some DNA off, uh, like a bit of blood off some glass. And, well, we get a DNA test and uh, the new Green Arrow is found out. Uh, 
how sexist of us, how, how, uh, how sexist of us, as I was saying earlier on this season, to think it's a male. Why do we not consider it's a female? Uh, so even Felicity references that, uh, but we find out, yeah, it's a female, but also like, yo, Oliver, it's your sister. It's not Thea, but it is your sister, which is a massive bombshell for Oliver. But essentially this just leads to Oliver and Felicity going on like a, a breadcrumb following trail or thing, if you want to call it. Uh, in order to just, you know, track things from uh, his father and stuff like that in order to try and find out the identity of this mystery woman. But speaking of the mystery woman with uh, uh, with Emiko as the new Grand Arrow, we actually see the Green Arrow in daylight on Arrow for like the first time in a while. If you notice, like a lot of Arrow's uh, action scenes where, you know, usually Oliver Queen is the Green Arrow, they're all at night or in the evening, you know, they're not in daylight so it was like it's sort of weird seeing that like i know like the season five finale we had that and think you know elseworlds crossover we had it as well but like you know specifically on arrow it's a it's a rare thing to see so i was like oh daylight scene with the green arrow suit that's pretty cool but as i was saying before diaz and lila had that scene well diggle and diaz had that scene but this is where it's introduced uh what's happening next so basically diaz makes a deal like you work for us you get some freedom, which, uh, D you know, Diggle's, Diggle's lying a bit there to Diaz, isn't he? And that's when Diggle basically tells, like, that whoever that dude was, higher up dude, we'll call him that, uh, says, like, yeah, no, that, that's not what happened. We're not going to let him go. We're going to set up the ghost initiative, uh, a ghost initiative again, which Lila then references as this, you know, the covert ops group where basically, um, you know, they go out, do these missions, so there's no, ex you know, they're expendable and there's no, you know, they can't track it back to Argus and stuff like that. That's Suicide Squad. And they even said they got rid of it after Amanda Waller died. Without name dropping Amanda Waller, they said after my superior passed or died or something. So they are actually just, I just thought it was just going to be a take on the Suicide Squad, where literally it's basically do the exact same thing, but maybe instead of a bomb in their neck, they have like a shock or something, or like a shock collar that can't be taken off or some sort of shock device, Instead of like a bomb being planted, it's like a taser or something and like knocks them out if they start being an idiot or something like that. It's legit Suicide Squad. We even see Diaz get a bomb planted in the back of his neck at the end of the episode. So this just proves that they can't use the name Suicide Squad. They couldn't even name drop Amanda Waller. So uh, that must mean the Suicide Squad stuff at DC is still happening. So they can't actually even reference Task Force X, they didn't even reference that. So we're just basically retconning Suicide Squad out of the Arrowverse and just pretending like it was always called the Ghost Initiative, I'm guessing. But this is gonna play out much more next episode. We're gonna see the actual members of the Ghost Initiative come in, which I think is Kane Wolfman, AKA Joe Wilson, AKA Deathstroke's son, uh, Cupid, or I'm Cupid Stupid, and uh, China White along with um, Ricardo Diaz. So I'm looking forward to that, but that's for like the next episode uh, and a few more episodes to come after that as well. But we do find out some history to Emiko, which is actually pretty interesting. We find out that Robert Queen had this, you know, other family and basically he abandoned uh, Emiko and her mother, but asked Walter Steele to take care of her. But like the mother was still alive at that point, but it was just uh, just do some sort of, uh, you know, just to care. Uh, like Robert asked Walter, but that never happened because Moira found out about it and well, things just went to crap for Emiko and stuff and her mother and they just, they sort of struggled after that. And obviously this is hard for Oliver to take. It's not necessarily straight up that he has a new sister. Like there's another weird crap has happened in all of his life to be like, oh, another sister. Okay. Like what's else? I, you know, like last week I was literally just, uh, you know, I was the flash last week. This is like nothing compared to that. So I don't think that's too weird for Oliver. I don't know respond to that. Thanks Siri, you don't know how to respond to that. Why are you listening to my review? How rude of her. But yeah, essentially, so Moira knew, so she basically like hit it all up, which is typical Moira, let's be completely honest. Um, but we find out that, sorry, what did I write down? We've, oh yeah, it's hard for Oliver to take. Um, Siri, you really stuffed up my review. Like this is actually extremely rude of you. Anyway, Hard for Oliver to take, not because he has a sister, but it's just because what if Oliver, uh, sorry, what if Robert had abandoned him and Moira and Thea? What if they were the other side of the situation? What if Robert had gone to, you know, Emiko and her mother and they were the ones that like had this prevalent lifestyle and all that and Ro Oliver and Thea and Moira were the ones that were abandoned. 
It'd be pretty crappy. It wouldn't be that nice, would it? But we go on to find that Emiko's mother, unsurprisingly, like really we thought there had to be some sort of massive motive to see what Emiko, or for what Emiko was doing this season. But Emiko's mother was apparently shot in the head by this, uh, what's his name? William Glenn Morgan. And then a fire was caused in like an apartment sort of uh, complex in order to cover for that. But you know, she was actually just, you know, full on assassinated essentially and shot in the head. And this is when we see Renee, he's keen to help, he's, he's keen to get back on the streets. And Curtis also just tagged along to be the, the tech support, I guess. So you're gonna need some tech support with his makeshift new sort of uh, team arrow that we have this season. Now the Emiko versus Glenn Morgan fight was actually pretty interesting just because of that goddamn blade that em uh, that Glenn Morgan had. It was almost like the like the shield that Kodiak had, one of the longbow hunters, but you know, you take out the circular bit and just put it on a stick. That's almost what it was like. It was an interesting choice of weapon, not gonna lie, but anyway. But what we find out is that Glenn Morgan apparently didn't do it. He said he was he wasn't in the country. He was elsewhere. That checked out. Emiko checked it up. Uh, checked it up. He wasn't in the country, so he was set up. So basically, Emiko was just led on this trail, which led nowhere, which led to a fake. So she's going to have to restart in order to track what happened to her mother and who caused the death of her mother and all of that. So it's a bit of a shot in the foot for Emiko, but it would be, I was wondering, I was like, are they really going to cover this all up in this one episode? Like what's Emiko going to do going forward after this? So I guess it makes sense that they do, do this fake out and then we follow Emiko, whether it be in a, you know, a lot of the time or just like on a side story uh, at certain points to find out who really did this to her mother. Because as I said, uh, it was recent, it was only last year. But speaking of Emiko, we do see her meet Oliver right at the end of the episode. I was wondering when they were going to meet, because uh, Oliver knew about her. So I was like, okay, when's this going to happen? So I thought their meeting was really cool uh, and just a nice moment, even though it was brief, um, because it's going to most likely start again at the end of next um, episode. And this is just sort of like a cliffhanger, if you want to call it. But let's move into the future stuff. There was future uh, flash forwards in this episode. And as you all know, I always leave them till the end to talk about it, Just talk about it in one big go. But these flash forwards centered around Zoe, Renee, and I guess you just chuck in a bit of, you know, a bit of a sprinkle of diner in there as well. But mainly between Renee and Zoe, which was set up at the end of the last uh, batch of flash forwards on Arrow. But um, yeah, so we thought Renee would be at some sort of position in the glades because it'd be weird like why Zoe would be elsewhere. Um, but we find out he's higher up than I think a lot of us thought he would be because Renee is the glades mayor. Uh, okay, wasn't expecting that. And I must say, Renee, interesting hairdo. I, w I don't think I'd rate it like a 10 out of 10, uh, but compared to what he has now, it's interesting. But essentially Zoe like brings up like she knows about what's going on out in the Star City and like references this Archer program, which essentially has stuff to do with the bombs. Uh, but Renee is like the complete opposite of what he is in the present day where he's willing to help everyone go out of his line. We're seeing that with Emiko right now. Um, and he's just the complete opposite in the future. Like he's just like, no, the great stuff, Star City. No, he's just like that. So he's the, almost the complete opposite of what he is in present day, which we are seeing, I guess, with a couple of characters that are relevant in these flash forwards. Now the best scene in these flash forwards was definitely the Dinah and Renee scene. It was just interesting seeing these two characters like this and going at each other, even reference a fight between Dinah and Renee, which is pretty cool. Um, but we get some access codes, which allows, you know, Zoe and Dinah to get in and uh, to the Archer program, I think it was specifically, and, you know, work out certain things with these bombs. But then we have that fellow politician of Renee's. Was, it, was he his assistant? Was he an, like an advisor? I really don't care because the dude looked like an asshole. Let's be completely honest. He just looked like a smug ass. But anyway, we had that dude there and he basically knows about the bombs. Renee brings it up and he knows about it. He even knew about Felicity's death. And he's like, yeah, she had to sort of be put in her place. She had to be put in her place. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Renee. I think the obvious thing is that he's going to turn good. It just matters how many episodes more of the flash forwards is it going to take before Renee becomes good. That's probably the big question here. I, I don't think they're gonna jump into it straight away. They might have something where Renee is just pretending to be along with it so he can find out more information, which will probably be the case, but it will be interesting to see if maybe that gets him in trouble, maybe he dies as well. Um, but it, you know, they're setting some stuff up there, which is pretty good. 
But overall, this was a great mid-season premiere for Arrow, in my opinion. I think this is what a mid-season premiere should do. It continued on from the little setups that episode 8 had, or the mid-season finale had, but also pushed some stuff forward for the rest of the season. Or maybe not the whole rest of the season, but the next handful of episodes, which will then progress more into the, the further... Uh, back half of this season. So I think it did its job, fleshed out Emiko, gave us a lot of backstory, and I'm sure we're going to learn a bit more of it as well. Um, and it was good to have, I'm pretty sure that was um, Jamie Sheridan, uh, or James Sheridan, who voices, I think he's James Sheridan, I think that's his name, who voiced Robert Queen. I'm pretty sure that was his voice. Would be maybe cool to have like a Walter Steele cameo. You never know, that might happen. Um, but it, that, that was nice to have all that and just like, a bit of a flashback to some Arrow history while moving into the Arrow future as well. So I really enjoyed this episode and I think most of you guys would have as well. But yeah, if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to smash a like on the video. It would be greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comment section down below your different thoughts on the episode. What'd you love? What did you hate? What'd you like? What'd you dislike? Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.